According to Phil Spencer, one of the most anticipated games in Xbox history is Bethesda's new space RPG, Starfield. A lot of us at X-Play, well, mostly our producer Emily, have waited with bated breath for official gameplay regarding the first new Bethesda IP in 25 years. That gameplay landed during the 2022 Xbox Bethesda Showcase and showed off everything from combat and character creation to a tentative release date. That's right, nerds. Todd possibly didn't put that May 7th there for nothing. While a locked release date has not yet been confirmed, May fits within the 12-month timeline, and it looks like Papa Todd's planning to squeeze out a big old baby just before Mother's Day next year. We're burning starlight, so let's dive in. Our first official look at gameplay is from early in Starfield, when players arrive on the moon of Crete. Here we see the power of the Creation Engine 2 in real time. Along with Starfield's HUD on the right, we see our standard health bar, weapon plus ammo count, and even projectiles. But the left is our main focus. This circle appears to be our map compass that rotates with the player, and there appears to be a quest marker subtly on it as well. Additionally, we see the oxygen and CO2 meter. This could operate in one of two ways. One, similar to Fallout's radiation balance with Radex and Radaway, where you may have to carry oxygen filters or tanks in order to keep yourself sustained on planets. Or two, it simply may be a meter that is affected by the natural viability of other planets. Surely out of the thousand planets that Starfield team has designed, there will be several, if not many, planets that feature dangerous conditions for humans, which could in turn limit exploration by massively affecting the oxygen meter. If not, I'm sure humans of the settled systems can make them uninhabitable and unbreathable in no time. That's a climate change joke. Next, we see a scanning version of the HUD, similar to VATS. In this scan, we are privy to various information and percentages, all research pertaining to the moon the player is currently on. As members of Constellation, it only makes sense that it's our mission to research and document the various planets we will encounter in our travels. Moreover, our left-hand HUD now shows the planet's information including temperature, oxygen levels, and gravity. And the bottom bar is packed with the option to scan, enter photo mode, toggle a guide, and most interestingly, set up an outpost. Speaking of the HUD, in this demo we also see it utilized in material mining and combat. Specifically in combat, showing an enemy's difficulty level, health bar, and for a brief moment, the pickpocket option for when this NPC is alive. And then quickly the take and transfer options upon their death. Typical Bethesda loot and shoot corpse style. From personal experience, it's much easier to steal from someone when they're dead. Take that as you will. Let's dive into Starfield's combat for a second. Now, while we didn't see a ton, there is enough to compare and dissect. As we mentioned in our Fallout 4 retro review, Bethesda did an impressive update on the combat in Fallout 4, making it fluid, creative, and fulfilling. In one sequence, we see this creative, fulfilling combat exemplified by the player shooting the jetpack of a pirate, causing them to explode upwards into the sky like some kind of terrifying NPC firework. And on the topic of jetpacks, there are jetpacks! Jetpacks will allow players not only the option to get creative in battle, but to explore the various planets in ways we haven't before. Move over, physics-defying Skyrim horses, it's jetpack time. And on the note of physics, it looks like gravity will play a unique role in not only combat, but surface traversal as well. As we noted earlier, the scanning version of the HUD provides the value of gravity on that planet. Hopefully we can look forward to a variety of gravity options on various planets and moons, ranging from light to heavy, providing a true intergalactic exploration experience. Lockpicking, a Bethesda staple, is back and comes in the form of a creative digilock puzzle this time, rather than just maneuvering a lockpick or bobby pin into place. Moreover, while we don't see hacking in the demo, as the player exits the facility, there is a computer right next to the door, which could possibly mean that the terminal slash computer hacking from Fallout has been added to Starfield as well. Now, space combat is great, but it's time to dig into the thing that sets Bethesda apart, its RPG elements. All of us at X-Play were genuinely surprised to see the return of the first-person punch-in for NPC dialogue. Honestly, we haven't seen this since the Oblivion and Fallout 3 days and considered it obsolete in the post-Skyrim era of the studio, even if they do look a little cross-eyed in this trailer. Hey, have you traveled at lightspeed before? You'd probably be a little scrambled too. And the Monday after the showcase, Bethesda came out and said that Starfield would be in a traditional Bethesda RPG first person, and that the main character would not be voiced. I repeat, would not be voiced. 
If anything, it proves that Bethesda has listened to the critiques of its predecessors and is working to bring the best elements from their history of games into Starfield. We mentioned in our previous Starfield video that the game will feature a persuasion system similar to that of Oblivion, but not nearly as effective as Todd Howard's persuasion on the Fallout 76 announcement. While we didn't get to see it in action, what we did get was confirmation of NPC recruitment onto your ship and outposts. These NPCs will then be able to work in these locations, similar to Skyrim, Fallout 4, and yes, even your companions in Fallout 76. And hopefully, will be romanceable too. But nothing will ever replace Garrus. Nothing. So now let's talk about you, or rather the character you get to create. During the extended look, we got a quick peek at character creation from the beginning of the game. There, we see the customization tabs for biometric ID, body, face, background, and traits. In these tabs, we can expect the same customization options we've seen evolve throughout the last 10 years of Bethesda titles, in addition to new options like choosing a walk style. Most importantly, you'll be able to choose your character's background from a wide list, including bounty hunter, chef, diplomat, and even gangster. Based on your background, you'll be given a set of three starting skills that relate to that choice. And most importantly, your background will be referenced and known by characters around you. It says here you spend some time as a diplomat. Similar to another great space RPG game. Your dossier says otherwise, Shepard. You were trapped on a cruise all those years ago, and you were the only one to make it out alive. From there, you can select optional traits that come with a unique set of advantages and disadvantages. For instance, if you pick Introvert, you have more endurance when adventuring alone versus with companions, as opposed to the Extrovert trait, which will most likely provide the opposite. Now, a lot of folks have been noting the similarities to No Man's Sky in regards to gameplay, but we'd like to take this time to point out a space game that Starfield's RPG elements look similar to Obsidian's The Outer Worlds. In the Outer Worlds, you not only select your background, which impacts your various skill levels and abilities, but throughout the game, you have the option to select traits that provide both a boon and consequence to your character. Starfield looks like a serious and grounded space RPG compared to its colorful and chaotic cousin, but it will be interesting to see if Bethesda's writing can keep up with the immense lore, humor, and creativity that Obsidian has brought to the space RPG table. Now, it isn't a space game without space travel, is it? And Bethesda has delivered. Not only can players look forward to piloting their own spaceship through space and engaging in space combat, but you'll have the opportunity to build bases on various planets and customize your ship. Now, we could get really cocky and tell you that our outposts, crafting, ship crafting, and even ship flying were just a few of the Starfield elements we correctly predicted in our Everything We Know About Starfield video. But like Space Icarus, we don't want to fly our ship too close to the sun, so we'll settle with a very subtle celebration. See? Nothing but humility here. The customization of your ship isn't purely cosmetic either, oh no. Ship parts will have individual functions, bonuses, and health levels, allowing players to build the ship of their dreams. From speedy vessels with a high level of maneuverability, to powerful bastions bulked with shields and health. The bottom of the ship customization menu is where we can learn about the different specs of our ship we'll have to balance. Our weapons, ranging from lasers to missiles, shield cargo, crew size, jump range, top speed, and more. There is so much to customize in this game, it's honestly overwhelming. Like an all-you-can-eat Las Vegas buffet. The choice can look super appetizing to some, but at the same time unappealing to others. Overall, Starfield is what we predicted in our Everything We Know About Starfield video, a sum of everything Bethesda from the last 20 plus years. You can see the Oblivion and Skyrim influences in Starfield, along with the Fallout 4 and, yes, Fallout 76 influences in the game as well. Starfield is the culmination of Bethesda's past and a look to its future. But Todd and Starfield are promising a lot. Over a thousand planets to land on freely and openly discover? It sounds almost too good to be true. But so did Cyberpunk 2077, No Man's Sky, and recently Fallout 76. Starfield looks and sounds impressive, but these last few years have taught us to take these big promises with a grain of salt, or perhaps a whole industrial salt shaker. Do we want these developers to deliver these incredible and impressive gameplay experiences? Yes, but not at the expense of their workers or exaggerating their capabilities just for press and clout. We'll keep an excited yet watchful eye on the upcoming Starfield updates and look forward to the day that we get to traverse the settled systems ourselves.